Hi, Baba Lua. Hi, Mamu Hi, Sini Jani. Mkone Jani. <laughs> Is it better yeah, now? Yeah, okay. I can hear you now. Hey, technology, guys. Yeah, BBC. Uh, it's, a hustle. <laughs> it's like that with us. It's like that with us. <laughs> Hi, is, it, is everything okay, okay now? Hi, Tebuho. Yeah, everything. Yeah, everything is okay, and I think like uh, we have joined already, so maybe we can just begin. I'll first start by introducing myself. So my name is Baba Lambono. I'm a final year PR and communication student at the University of Johannesburg. I'd like to welcome everyone who just recently joined us for this evening's event. And yes, um, the topic for this evening is the power of Stockfell in creating generational wealth, right? So I'd like to welcome everyone. Thank you, guys. Please feel free. And if there's any question that you'd like to address towards Umambusi, just please type in on the comment section any remarks whatsoever. Just please uh, type in on the comment section. I'll be able to read up from there. So uh, um, the guest for this evening is Umambu Siskenjane. She is the founder of Stockwell and BSK Marketing. So Umambu Siskenjane please briefly tell us about yourself and what inspired you to actually start this initiative your organization yes you can just take it out okay thank you and uh, once more thanks for the opportunity thanks for inviting me and hi to everyone yes. uh, yeah mambusi is a marketer by profession when i was studying i had to decide what to study and I fiddled and fiddled. Eventually, I found my home, which is the marketing space. And having studied marketing, uh, I had to again decide which niche do I pursue, because as you would all know, marketing is very broad and wide. And at that point in time, I just fell in love with a uh, brand marketing. You know, I got involved as a at about three, four years, uh, and uh, the next thing I got hooked up in the family business, fish and chips in the township, but yeah. I stopped and went back into pursuing my marketing. And then in 1998, I saw a gap in the market to actually connect the brands with the stock fell market segment. And why stock fell market segment? As you yeah. all know, stock fell is about Imali. You know, people yeah. get to and at that point in time, I was the same age as you guys, even though people think good is stock fell as a bococo. I wasn't a cocoa. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I always highlight that, you know, I became part of the stock fell movement as early as 1981. And we we're just doing the normal thing, saving money, getting together, having coffee, drinks, whatever. And I then decided to put that in the context of marketing and say, how can I actually link the stock fairs with, with, the, with the different brands? Because stock fairs are organized. And that's how my company was born, as a bridge that connects the market and the stock fair community. As you know, stock fair community is quite huge and large. But whilst I was enjoying that and, and riding on the wave of being a, you know, the marketing agency owner and making people consume as many brands as they could as stock fairs, I realized that, look, one thing that is needed is education, financial education with stock fairs. Because it's one thing to save money to buy groceries, for example. And I think in Ningile, you can relate to your aunt, your koko, your mama, abatenga ikrosa, yabon wish you guys box micro and must say figure kind. But why should we just be buying e cross? What can we do from an investment perspective? You know, I then decided to start a division called the Stockfell Academy, which is purely about educating Stockfell members about various aspects of education. One of them being a uh, property, you know, and it disclaimer, guys, I am not a financial advisor. I just want that to be noted. Uh, I'm just Umambusu who's passionate about Stockfell's development from a young age. Because at this age, I wish there's so many things that I would have known then as a Stockfell member. I haven't done badly, but there's a lot that I could have learned just as a member of a Stockfell, you know, doing to get things together with other ladies. Yeah. So that's me in a nutshell, otherwise I can, I can go on and on. 
Mambu, so that is actually quite lovely. And I'm just like glad to be having this engagement beginning because i'm also a young woman who's actually interested in you know empowering women women about financial education because i honestly believe there's still you know space or gaps that we need to fill as young people in black societies about financial education i really think that we should go back to our to our origins and really teach our people even teach us ourselves about financial literacy so yes with that being said can you just please unpack uh you know um this evening's topic about you know your organization, the Stockfell uh, specifically. What is it that you guys do in your organization, members and whatnot? Literally everything that you do in your society. Okay, thank you. Uh, my organization it has got two legs. I call it it's a two-legged table, if you like. The other part is it's a host. You know, you're a big FMCG. They pay us a fee to market to stock firms. So it's a business side of it. And if you are a youngster studying marketing, for example, you know, it says to you that there is an opportunity to actually to be part of the agencies that are marketing to stock firms. Because we all know about these big brands, the Oglivies and whatnot, the PR agencies and all that. But we're not aware that you can start a marketing agency and market brands to stock firms and get paid by the, by, by by these big companies. So that's one part of my of my business. You know, I get paid by big companies to market their brands to the stock fair community. You know, the other side, and of course, it creates jobs for youngsters, internship. I've got youngsters who have just completed their studies who come and do leadership, you know, in our company. And yeah, so that fulfills me Im immensely that at least I can be counted as a black woman who owns a marketing and promotions agency. And my clients are big corporate companies like the Tiger Brands, the Nestle's, and you know, all the big brands that you can think of. I've saved those kind of clients. Then the other side of the business is the Stockfell development, the individual, which is I call the Stockfell Academy. There's a division called the Stockfell Academy. It is an NPO because I really believe that we need to have structured ongoing education conversations education programs for the Stockfell women and Stockfell men, you know, because this 45 or 55 billion rands that circulates within the Stockfell market, is it creating wealth for Stockfells or is it just making Stockfells consumers, you know? I know that Abu Mama, they've saved him money to pay for your university fees and all that, well and good. I know with Abu Mama, they save him money stock filling to extend easy to, you know, buy furniture in the house, that's well and good. But are we really developing stock fairs to be from a wealth creation perspective? So what I'm passionate about, what I do from time to time on platforms like this is to actually say, how can we actually pick a topic like retirement, for example, and educate Stockfell members, you know, how do they plan, plan for their retirement? How do they save their money wisely, as opposed to, for example, where they buy a grocer. That's not being smart at all. You know, you say you are saving, but this money is not really generating interest for you. You know, even if it's really a bank, it's packed at the bank, it's not creating wealth for yourself. So my company is about, yes, it's business commercial, we charge a fee to do marketing. We also uh, uh, on the development side of the Stockfell members, especially the younger generation. Wow, Mambusu, that is actually quite insightful because you know, uh, as people are in which way, just think like every month we don't even like try to associate the stock with organizations so and like i really think that uh your organization is really not far-fetched from us as like pr and communication students because we also practice in such sectors right so yes uh with that being said mambusi i'd like to ask you a question right to someone who does not understand what um wealth creation is what how can you uh, explain that com concept in like um the simplest form 
Okay, and again, just to, 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 to repeat, uh, uh, I'm not a, a, an official or authorized financial advisor, but I'm talking as Mambusi, who has lived for more than, uh, yeah, almost 60, more than 60 years. So I've got experience about poverty and what it means to feel like being wealthy, because we all want to be wealthy. And I always say that it starts inside from you. You know, for me, your wealth creation is the ambition that is inside you. You know, it's not what you see. Yes, we see things, we see wealthy people and all that, but it just it, you, you must be driven inside yourself. And there must be that fire. You know, there's a movement, it's called maybe you guys know about the fire movement, uh, you know, financial independence and retire early. That's what worth, you know, you need to have be fired, you know, to say, look, I want to be financially independent. I want to retire early. And I think the younger generation are actually in that mindset, you know. For example, I had set myself a goal that I want to retire at age 55. But guess what? One morning I woke up, I was 55. I realized that I'm far from retiring. <laughs> and that was the <laughs> shock of my life because I was so busy with my life that I didn't even realize that I'm not accumulating mm. enough assets to actually to make me be able to say, now I'm pressing a stop button. I have yeah. to, to, to retire. And from that point, that is about 10 years ago, because and I always disclose my age, I'm not embarrassed. I'm 64, my next big birthday is 65, you know? So I said to myself, you know what, Busi? focus on the next 10 years. What are you going to do to make up, you know? Not that I've done badly, you know? So this wealth creation thing is about what is it that you want to achieve for yourself and for your generation? It's things that you do and things that you don't do. It's your lifestyle, for example, you know? If you decide you choose to live a lifestyle that is going to eat on what you earn, you are likely not going to be wealthy at all. But if you make a decision that whatever I am, no matter how little it is, I'm going to use that to actually build wealth, for example. What do I mean, for example, practically? I discovered last night, believe it or not, and thanks to you guys, that as I'm talking to you now, I've got a 40 years case study to share with you how wow. I created wealth. Honestly, and a penny dropped last night as I was preparing that in 1981, I bought a house in Soweto. 1981, that's 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And when I took up a bond to buy that house, because I had just started working, I was still very young. My husband then said, who's your skeleton in the school? He's called it to say 20 years. You know, mm -hmm. he wasn't impressed with me at all. But I went ahead and signed up because I was working for a company that was giving housing loans and all that. Fast forward from 1981 to 2021, that house, I remember very well, I bought it for 20,000 rands, a Soweto. Now, I told you 20,000 in these days. Yes, and you can't. that house is still standing. It's worth almost a million. It's in Soweto. I've got tenants. I'm renting it out because I don't stay in that house that on. I've moved on, you know? So wealth creation is that at a very early age, try and find something that you can invest in. It's all out of but it's a good debt, as they say, I'm a financial advisor. So uh, I will be sharing with you in a nutshell my 40 years journey of actually creating wealth for myself as an individual, but also with a stock fair. Because having bought that house as an individual, I also got involved in a stock fair where I was invited by a friend, may her soul rest in peace. They were buying property in Kuka Park Lodge, Hazyview, and Pumalanga. And she said to me, can you come and join us who are investing in a holiday home? I said, what does Mpumalanga have to do with me? When am I going to stay in the house? You know? And they decided, because it was eight ladies, 1998, who identified a this uh, unit at, at Cooker Park Lodge, Hazy View, which is a holiday resort. And then we came together, we clapped up, we took up a bond to buy this holiday home, which was going to be rented out. And to be specific, we bought it for 650 rents. We did not pay a cent back because that house paid for itself. It is in the rental pool. We still own it up until today. 
I mean, fast forward 10 years later, we had paid off the bond because we took off a bond here 10 years, but we put it in the rental pool. So what that means is as people visit the holiday resort, they also get allocated into our house. It's a, it's, a, wow. it's a three bedroom house, you know. So I can proudly say I'm one of the owners of Holiday Homes, not Ama Points, a Kruger Park Lodge. And I would not have done it in year one. I did it in Mama, it was eight of us. Actually, what happened a month ago, because we had taken a life policy, should anyone pass away so that your portion gets paid, Abantu Anabako Baso inherited. Our policy matured, and then we received an email from all mutual that said, guys, you've been paying for this policy. It has matured now. You've paid up the house. Uh, you actually have about 300,000 rents that has accumulated to change. Yeah, 300,000 rents. Imagine how we felt, you know? You see? <laughs> Pardon? I was just saying it's a lot of money as it changed. <laughs> Exactly, especially now with the COVID as paid. So we shared, we, we know we made and submitted our claim and then we shared our bids and then I'm busy now upgrading my kitchen, preparing for retirement, using that money, you know, you see. So through that stock fell, I can now say to I'm part of property owners in his view at a golf course, a, a nine hole golf course. Then the other uh, method that I've used in creating this wealth through stock fairs or even on a personal basis, uh, I then bought myself a house in 1991 and then I just realized that, gee, Busi, now you own property number three. And yeah, things happened, unfortunately got divorced, but I decided to buy a house for myself. And way back then, this house was 410,000 rands, I still remember. It's in North Sleep. As we speak, the house is worth almost 3 million rents. I took a bond. Now, I was 41 years old when I took that bond, you know, to save it. So it's, 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 it's a sacrifice because I had to deprive myself certain things to be able to save that bond. But I've always believed that somebody, one of my favorite uh, inspiration uh, wealth creators is Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki says, a house is not necessarily an asset, it can be a liability if it does not generate money. So my house is also used for generating money for a rental. And one of my tenants for many, many years was my daughter, who I love dearly, my only daughter, because I said to her, when you start working, you can't stay in Mahala, you have to pay rent. So I've been generating income, my daughter paying me rent from my house so that I can be able to save is the bond. <laughs> so you guys, if you've got little ones out there, as soon as you buy yourself your house, tell yourself they're not going to stay for free in your house when they start working, you know, because this house has to be actually be an asset, you know. Yeah, you're creating a nest for yourself for retirement. Fast forward, because I've been running this company, BSK, believe it or not, I'm one person, I don't believe in renting fancy offices in Sentin. I've always ran my businesses, started from home and all that. So a few years ago, I said, I'm tired of running a business from home because this house that I bought in 1990, it was a house, it was an office. I was also renting it out. So I then decided to buy a house in the neighborhood as an office. Now that house is part of my property portfolio. I'm using it for a business. I bought it in 2015. It's in Fairlands. Uh, it's one of the prime streets, you know, Fairlands, not far from North Cliff and all that. So I bought it in 2015. I bought it for 2.1 million. I was talking to an advisor the other day saying, look, it's at the right spot. You can rezone this property so that five years down the line, you can resell it for multi-purpose housing purpose. It's like as a complex, you know. So he's not even aware that I'm a property developer i mean it i discovered last night i said you boost you've got a house so where to you've got a house in north cliff which you've been using as a business you should have been renting out to your daughter and and you are you know you have created a cottage you've got a, a house office where i'm running i'm talking you from that house as we speak it's a house that is offices it also has tenants at the back they're helping me to you know to to to, to push this bond 
I also have another stock fell with my husband and a friend who were sitting chilling on a Friday evening and we we're just talking about property. Me, I'm always big mouth when it comes to this property thing. I said, guys, don't you think we should just buy these repossessed properties? And then one of the friends said, oh, great. When are we doing that? That was in 2012. Then we found ourselves buying a property, a townhouse in Ranfontein. It was selling for 196,000 rands, which is nothing. You can't get even an RTP housing, 196 rands. We bought it. We got an, a rental agent. That townhouse is generating money for us. Every year we share dividends. We get about 10,000, 15,000 rents each, you know. So can you see how, and I didn't do it alone. I did it, you know, with two friends. And then we looked at our cash situation. Of course, when you go into property, always assess your personal situation here to I find it. Not everyone can afford to pay a bond, your 2,000 rands or your 3,000 rands or whatever. But the message is here, over a period of time, you'd be shocked, you'd, sub you'd surprise yourself, like I've surprised myself. But in 40 years' time, I've actually built a, a portfolio of properties, unaware subconsciously. And I've enjoyed these properties as a home, as a business, you know, and also for rental purposes. So it's something that, you know, I would love to see youngsters sitting, gathering and say, how can we start now, especially in our early 80s, and build this property portfolio? It's just one of the asset classes. Abantu Abenza, e financial planning or advisors, they'll talk about asset class. You know, it's property, it's cash, it's equities, things like those. But I'm talking about property because it's something that I have done as Ubusi. It's not anything that I'm reading about. So I'm sharing with you my personal journey for the past 40 years. Wow, Mambus, I'm actually <laughs> learning a lot from you. I don't want to lie. And yeah, your story is very inspirational. You've done a lot for yourself thus far. And you're really encouraging me, right? Because I've just recently started an initiative with my associates. It's uh, mm -hmm. called Connecting Without Connections. Because mm -hmm. as Black people, we are obviously marginalized. We don't have a lot of resources at our exposure, right? So we, mm -hmm. we, we saw that there's a need for us to help each other. And now that you are you know, narrating your story, I can actually connect that to us. Because we came together as a group and we're like you know what so that things that i don't know as an individual but if we can just you know come together and just like really help each other so what i'd like to ask you Ubuti, you know if we because even for us to move forward is like how do we you know access such information where do we where do we go because i feel like um you know what we need as people is just to have access to information like which platforms or rather what how how do we know Ubuti, where do we invest or organizations to invest in like ha having access to information basically that's my question which platform do we go in or maybe you know ask people to mentor us such things that's what i'd like to know thanks for that question baba Lua. it's so important i mean i mean information is it, it's key you know, really if you want to punish anyone and deprive that person information you know and there's diff different sources of information it depends on your lifestyle i'm just going to give you one practical example here yeah, this past weekend uh, as they say we all have this gadget all of us you know internet connectivity and all that stuff and one of my hobbies personal hobby after i've gone through my whatsapps and all that stuff i just go on is news 24 or something like that and just try and you know update myself you know things that i may have missed on tv or whatever and this past weekend I came across an article uh, about, uh, I'll just try and quickly read it to you because it shook my friends to the core. Uh, this article is about 10 things that, yeah, it says retirement top stress factors. Retirement top 10 stress factors. And then I read it, it's a very long uh, article. And I said, you know what, I can't keep this to myself. I need to share it with my friends because most of the stuff, if not everything that is in this article, it's speaking to me as a person who's now 
about to retire and i've got lots of friends who are retired already you know there's lots of mistakes that we make as well as as much as why that age from a retirement perspective i then forwarded this article to my friends you'd be surprised the faces that i was getting yo this is scary yo this is scary because they were now getting information things that they've been running away from hiding for example you've got this massive house you are retired and all that you know because sometimes we keep these houses now you have to maintain this house they say start scaling down whilst the house is a center is a modern it says in a value because if you are losing if you so to answer you directly source of information internet i mean really the internet is the source of information internet i mean really uh, yeah let's just and it, it, it's a type of things that you search on the internet but share once you found something valuable circulate it you know just all these things that the things that go viral but be the source of information yourself search out for information and share it and then the other one it's reading i'm a i'm a, I'm a bookaholic and i'm going to actually uh, uh, share a book with you now you can make note of it I love books. Uh, when I want to distress, sometimes I just go to exclusive books. It might sound a bit old fashioned, but I still, I still like chilling at exclusive books and just pick a book. Uh, you know, how to win. Life can be unfair sometimes, you know, and life can be a fight, you know, and that this book struck me and said, how do you win this unfair fight? For your small business or even in your personal space it's by sam hazel dean you know i'll share with you with you babano and i've read so many books but one thing that i've took out of out of this book is just being able to make a decision about say creating wealth for yourself because we talk about it we think about it do you make a decision you know and that's that's a milestone you know most of the time people don't reach that decision making point and what does making a decision mean we know what is a decision but decision means it's actually focusing what are you focusing on and having decided that i am going to focus or we are going to focus on investing as as a group of friends get someone who's going to hold you responsible you know like you know someone that you respect was that baba Lua and and Nolitando, how far are you guys? How are you doing? Fedile, where, how are you doing? Get someone to hold you responsible. And the third one is commit. Because if you don't commit, nothing is going to happen, you know? So you must make a commitment that we are going to buy a property, like me and my two other friends. We decided to hold each other responsible and we committed money to actually investing in that property. You know, so then you the decision becomes worth a while instead of saying, Hi, Bessie, together we've decided to go to Scully Stock Fair. You know, most people talk like that. I a stock fair and said we've decided to go to Funubu investor, but they don't commit to acting. So, source of information is books. When you are together, share books. The old fashioned stock fellas, I always call it my, when I'm addressing white people. Bangbuza, what in the stock fair? And it is a book club. I mean, long by busy book club and it's not fair. It's just that happens to be a stock fella saying what? Yeah, but you see, till the stock fella say to a semi. So it's internet, it's books, it's TV. Maybe if I can just share with you on a lighter note, I recently bought this TV, Bengas, but it's smart TV. Oh my good gracious. I never thought that I would be so addicted to it. I just better to go to bed because now I can YouTube this, YouTube this, you know, <laughs> on that, you know, things that because previously it used to be tired. Laptop, but wow, what a pleasure. I'm sitting in a lounge and then when everybody's going to bed and then I start going YouTube. But whatever I check on YouTube, it's something that builds me. 
that develops me, even spiritually. You know, that's another thing that I've read. Don't just only take it on a hardcore business. Like Oprah, I'm the great, greatest fan of Oprah. You know, your spiritual being is very important. Are you spiritually nourished? Are you spiritual? So take some of these spiritual messages and convert them into creating wealth for yourself. I'm going, if you allow me, if you don't mind, I'm going to quote one of the old fashioned Sakulas Bangani Sifunda, but just or sever about to make fish as you two number love I five. I think we all know that parable, a Sunday school and all that. But I was listening to one a lady on a YouTube the other day making an example. I mean, you take simple thing like if fish as you two number love I five, that is saving, that is investment. And then you multiply that. You see, you no, know, it's a simple thing like a Bible, an old fashioned Bible, an old story in the Bible. And then you say, I'm going to convert that into, into my life, your wealth creation. Because those five loaves fed the multitudes. Those fish, as he too, fed the multitudes. So, it can feed the multitudes in your family. It can feed a, feed a generation to come, you know. So, yes, from an age perspective, we tend to become more spiritual as secular, but I'm taking it, try and draw spirituality and bring it into your life, you know, in terms of creating wealth for yourself. So, it's books, it's internet, and uh, it's, of course, it's radio. I think there's so much media platforms out there. I mean, we are blessed to be exposed even newspapers what do you read i still subscribe to e city press the sunday times i mean man figure like office in no one reads a newspaper i said guys it's okay i know i'm full of my paper but i'm going to share with you because mina when i read e city press i don't read the gossip you know all these things that who's doing what and all those things you know who's fired you and you know the celebs things you know i just i don't focus on those things a lot i mean you know and then i'll read a business section with city press you know and that business session is called New York Carter. you know i keep on cutting things there's a guy that i think you know who proverb you know, I didn't know proverb, you know, until I picked him from the pepe. I mean, I'm not in that space. And it's amazing how I got inspired to find a proverb, his investment in property, you know. And having read about a proverb, his journey in investment, I shared it with my husband, my husband shared it with friends. So yeah. source of information, you share and then let that information go viral in different formats. I thank you a lot, Mambusi. I'm actually learning a lot from your teachings, honestly. And I'm just glad you touched spirituality because I guess though, you know, Tina, young people, it's something we are oblivious to us too. Like we're not really concentrated towards our spiritual lives and how can we use our spirituality to actually attract the things that we want. Said Mambusi, there's actually this stereotype, especially in black societies, Uguti, you know, I'm a stock files, it's societies that are actually reserved for elderly people. How do we then repudiate from that, move away from that perspective as young people in order for us to also participate in this stock files? Because I, for one, I know Uguti, this is something that I also want to, you know, get into. Thanks, Baba, again for that question. Let's let's start with Mambusi, and I'm going to be open. I'll give you a practical case. Mambusi joined her first stock fair in 1981. Let's count. Yes. How old was Mambusi when she joined the stock fair? <laughs> you know, let's do a simple. I just thought she was young. I just thought she was young. Yeah, well, so the, I'm trying to highlight to you. Uh, my mother-in-law is 86 years old. She's been part of a stock fell for more than 50 years. What does people join stock fells when they were young? But what, what we now see, what the media is showing, Ibonisa Okokbusi also stock fell in, but they don't tell you Gutu Mambusi joined stock fell when she was young. 
My other stock fell, I joined it in 1992, I remember very well. My son is 29, 30 now. He was a baby when I joined that stock fell. I'm still part of that stock fell, you know? So people don't wait until they get old and then join a stock fell, you see? You know, mm. people join stock fell because they are friends, they are neighbors, they are colleagues, you know? You see, your colleagues are your age group. So you start a stock fell with people or servants are level. You set a five-year goal for yourselves. You know, you could be all young, abantu anabangano, you don't have children, you've just moved into townhouses, you want to buy your smeg, you know, all these things. Smeg stock fell. Uh, yeah. So that's how we started. We bought certain things, they were not called smeg, it was something else, different brands at that stage. So it is a big myth about stock fella and Sabantu Abadala. That is why I was excited when I was invited to talk to you guys, because I feel one of the things is to demystify that about stock fella and Sabantu Abadala, you know, you see. Uh, because all these stock fellas that you know about is saver billions and billions. Yes, Abantu Abadala, the majority of them, but they've been part of those stock fellas for more than 30 years. So meaning that you guys, as young as you are, you can learn from us because we've started these stock fairs whilst we were young. We've educated you. We've built homes out of, we've started businesses out of those stock fairs. So stock fair movement is not going to die. Yes, the name stock fair, I know in a negative connotation because some of the stock fairs, you know, I know there are those, you know, so, and I say, look, for example, the stock fell said property investment. I used to tease my friends. I said, guys, you may be all doctors because four of them are medical practitioners. And, and it but also lies, it's a stock felling. Yeah, but you see, it's just that, <laughs> you know, yeah, we, 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 we don't socialize the same way as other stock fells do. But the mechanics and the processes are the same. Hence, they are called social clubs. They are called investment clubs. They are called holiday clubs, you know, they are called kitchen parties and all that because people want to move away from that stock fair. If you take Ikepitec as an example, it's one of the uh, businesses that was started by Stock Fair Samapuni, the, the Stellenbosch guys, you know, they call them the, 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 the Stellenbosch Mafia. What, they, what did they do? It's a group of friends who are very rich. They decided they saw a gap in the market, and then they said, let's start a bank, which is Capitec. I mean, it's quite big today. I mean, e, e Avbop, to be specific, Avbop was started in 1918 as a stock fair because there was influenza. The way we were faced with COVID today, there was a COVID that was called influenza 1918. A lot of people were dying at that stage because like, people are dying now because of the COVID. So I'm a Puno in that community in the first state because the but no, why don't we start something so that Magvede is see for it becomes easier? That's how Avbok was born, was born as a stock fair, you know. And I'm still waiting for the day when your generation there will be a black owned generation. So to answer you directly, Baba, no, Stockfell, there's nothing old about Stockfell. It's just that people grow in Stockfells. Mm. Yeah, Mambusi, that is actually uh, quite insightful because uh, I can actually attest to what you're saying. Nami recently, this year, actually, I just joined Stockfell. But another thing, I feel like what you're saying, hence I asked you about information, access to information, right? I felt as though it it doesn't benefit me in a way the stock fell being so this year because I'm mm -hmm. thinking Guti, if we're just going to you know if if it's twelve people within stock fella and then we pay each other five hundred rent every month meaning Guti, the whole year or for for one like a, a person receives like six thousand rent and there's no interest that it's more like saving money there's no interest like literally the whole year you've you've been putting 500 rand without having interest so i feel like a lot of young people like maybe they just repudiate to join like i'm a stockpile for such reasons would see the there aren't any you know interest in stockpiles 
how do we then i don't know find such information which maybe we can just use the money that we get from stock fail and really try to make interest or invest it into something that is that is going to generate us interest uh, you know the key thing with any stock fail it starts with setting a goal for yourselves i always say there are stock fairs that are purely social one of them I belong to it and I, I don't love it that much. I mean, young bang doing it because I wouldn't have growth in that. It's mm -hmm. nice to meet on a Sunday. We contribute 300 friends. We put it in just an ordinary savings account. But we are friends. Friendship is very important for your emotional well being. Yeah, what? But you, as an individual, you need to decide and say, is this stuff an adding value? To my left, mm. and I always say to people, I will not waste my one hour, two hours hanging around with people who don't add value in my life. You know, you see. So if your conversation with your friends you say, guys, no man, the six thousand rands they see told I elo hichigele as aje as cool. Start the conversation. You need to start the conversation, and then and say, okay, who can we get to come in and, and advise us? You know, get someone you know reputable. You can even go to the bank. You know, search around for people. You know, professional people who can come not to sell things to you to advise you how to invite because you have to draw a line. Some people they'll come to you and say because they want to sell something that is going to make you get rich quick. You know, so you must be able to screen and search. So in the Mobuti Mali is or Jig as a little bit chicken as we turn it says a five thousand rands. Maybe you can justify it more but it discipline over me again that five thousand rands your pattern school fees, for example. You know, yes. like I know in the Western Cape, about Mama Banding Bas Tanda Batu Gumka Lelo West School fees, yeah, but or way uniform, you know. That's okay. You know, you can justify that. But it forced you to be back and a man, dear Bona, within your first. Then, also, it had your tank stationary. You are going to buy a school uniform. There is justification in that. But what I do not agree with, imagine that I call it, it, it it's packed in the bank. In fact, mm -hmm. I'm a bank wonky, they call it lazy money. There's lots of stock fell lazy money that is sitting within the bank system. What that means is, ni begi ni mali a bank, ni begi we transactional account. It does not generate enough interest because ni mele wuti magna vela isi for. You are waiting for someone to die, you know, and this money is not actually growing. I'm saying you must be smart as to how do you actually even keep. By the way, banks are not going to come knocking and say knock knock. This money is lazy because it's lazy to you, but it's making money for them. That is why the banks use in properties they build a shopping malls using your money, you know. So it's up to you to actually find out and research how can we actually invest better. There's lots of investment. There's a, one of my favorite friends, Upali Salimolo, she's written a book, Stockfell. Uh, I can't remember the title of the book, but you know, we work very closely. You get people, Palisa is a banker by profession. Uh, so you must also tie we network here and when you form a stock fair form a stock fair with people with different skill sets you know mm -hmm. users are with a different skill but as fun we've got different i'm a marketer you know i like talking blah 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 marketing ideas one of my friends is in a stock fair now these three people she's a she, she's an accountant by profession she counts up to the last cent She's very finicky about how you spend money. So try and get people up as a tie to me. No, man. I think we can do better. Yeah, but you see, and ni mamela ne don't because one negative thing about stock fairs, why some people, especially young children, they don't because there's a lot of stupid fighting within stock fairs, you know, attitudes, you know, especially women stock fairs are just the worst in terms of you know petty things. And I always talk about that, you know, just look at the bigger picture, something that can build you as a group. Okay, Mambo, because I want to to say hand for manje. Uh the final question from me, and I'll just uh, move to what's the comment section and just maybe ask some of the questions because people are actually um addressing some questions towards you. So I'd like to know, right, if one, especially people are obviously who joined uh the engagement, if one wants to join uh one of your the, your academy, 
Like, how do we go about that if we're interested in joining your academy? Okay. Uh, I would like to challenge you guys that let this not be a talk show because yes. we've spoken for an hour. Yes. One of my challenges has been to get a group of Stockfell people who are committed what is is together continuously for i'm talking stockfell academy now uh, to join the stockfell academy is to raise your hand and say i would like to be part of the conversations on an ongoing basis that's all i need so if there's 10 of you listening to this conversation after this uh, 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 discussion i'm committing that we are going to have regular structured engagements to under the Benaya Stockfell Academy because my biggest challenge even if I say join people don't attend even mm. when I I used to even get sponsors to say long before COVID book the venue and get a speaker they're just too busy mm. I will be addressing them so it's the commitment from you the Stockfell mm. Academy it's made of you not necessarily of Umambusi so to answer you directly, to join Stockfell Academy is to say, Mambusi, we would like to once a month, you know, and as I'm saying, I'm committing that we will pick a topic. We will or we will form some communication platform, tips about this. Then that's what makes Stockfell Academy. Otherwise, it's just like a church emptying and abandoned if you know what I mean. You see? So it's a platform that I've created that is battling to get people who are committed to get the message. But I'm saying to you, I'm here, I'm raising my hand. Even if it's only five of you, it doesn't have to be 50, it can only be five of you. And we actually move forward and we will grow it together. So it's, it's, it's very open-ended. It's, th it's that commitment from your end that we want to be part of this movement. I mambo say I can just say with me now. I am ready to commit into it. And like you just mentioned something that we can maybe just find some platform that we can use. There's actually actually a social media page that me and my friend we've created. And it is actually um a lot of followers there, but we didn't know for the longest time what to do with that platform. And the Una lady she's here, no no sandwich is here. So I'd like to think because I honestly I believe in them and I trust them. I really think that they can also be interested into continuing this academic stock falls with you. So yeah, I am actually looking would like to actually do this so yes mambo so we can just move to um the comment section because the questions people will address some questions there's um ulebu mamulab or oh, ulebu mamulab uti stock files are not uh familiar structures in black communities they also help to retain ownership money within these communities i just yes. think it was, that was just a remark not necessarily yes. a question the, yes. yes there was a question from Oban. I don't know how to move. I think there's a Palisa. I can see Palisa. Palisa, yes. Palisa Ntuli. Uti, yeah. what advice do you have for young people? Spo, I'll, I'll talk to you later. I'm still online. Okay. 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 Yes. So, uh, okay. No, it's okay, ma'am. What advice do you have for younger generation who wants to start a Stockfell but isn't sure how to find the right people because Stockfell is a good way to invest and save money? I think she can actually use what we just spoke about. Maybe if, but if you just want to elaborate on that, it's okay. Yeah, I think the key word here is to identify a person or people who share the same values with you, they don't have to be five or ten. The problem, people get boggled down with trying to get a lot of people. You can form Stockfell Me 3. It's much easier you make decisions, is share the same values and look around you, get someone who can advise you to walk the journey, you know, as young people. Don't boggle down to getting five, ten people to, to form a Stockfell Me. Okay, I don't know if there's another. Yeah, actually, maybe can I just say something? I see Nolitando, Silimela. Yes. 
Yeah, she's just actually echoing my point. She says, having a large group of people in a stock fair sounds so attractive. You can't predict if someone may cause any trouble or problems in the future. So since it's impossible to predict the future, is there any formal contact members of stock fair can sign? Definitely, that's a very important question. Yeah, uh, there's lots of conflicts and fights between stock fairs. Uh, because Abanda Bafane, Abanyele joined a stock fair with some ulterior agenda. So there's a document called the Constitution. Stock fairs need to form their own constitution or agreement of some sort. And I always advise, let everyone sign, let everyone have a, coffee, a copy, so that when things go sideways, at least you have that constitution to actually help you resolve your conflicts. Lovely. Angaz Fidel, Uti, does Tokpal have any disadvantage? If yes, what can it be? Uh, to be quite honest, I, I, I don't I, I, I don't think there's any disadvantage in a stock fan. You know, as they say, unity is power. If you believe in unity, because stock fan is about unity collectively. Anything that you do as a collective, it can it can it can work to your advantage. So there isn't a disadvantage. The disadvantage is the how you run your stock fan. That's the disadvantage, you know. So if you don't have your constitution or your contract in place, you don't have a clear vision as a stock fan, then that becomes a disadvantage. But other than that, there's so much that we can do together if you work together, you know, be two, the two of you or three of you or five of you or whatever. We also have another question from Utumi. Uti, can we use a stock file as a saving tool and how effective it is, given that we constantly hear of people fleeing with money? Again, it goes back to what I've just said now. It's transparency in terms of your constitution. And you, younger generation, you must do, don't do what stock file has been done. Uba nabanda bata tu chairman no secretary no treasurer zonke is mwa dispelela kubona every meeting you need to have a transparent reporting yele ndo yobuti imali if ni investi le we live in the digital world now you should be able to access yele ndo i financial status say in terms kuna ma apps you know that have been developed now so that each and everyone can see what is happening. The problem is that, yes, especially the so-called executive, I always call them Ms. Kebemo Ezukulu, I must talk fairly, chairman, no secretary, no treasurer, because they connive the three of them, Baba Lege Nemali, Boba Tat. You see? I'm a crook, I'm a crook, yes, definitely. Kala Ngaku, executive. Founders, especially the Kali stock fell among founder members. Sakalwa ini na yabo. You see, so you need to be always vigilant and hold them accountable. You know, we actually allow that to happen. <laughs> yeah. I Mambu, see, we really had an amazing engagement. I believe that everyone who was here, they've literally learned a lot tremendously. So so I really think, Uguti, we came to the end of our engagement. I'm not sure if there's any person who'd like to make any remarks towards you, but I personally, Giavonga, for like honestly uh, honoring us and actually gracing us with your presence. It's been insightful. And moving forward, I really, uh, yeah, uh, I hope of accountable we want to join Emiliaco, and I think uh, there are people who are also interested into joining the academy as well, like you have advised. So I don't know if there's anyone who'd like to say anything, guys. This is your platform. No. I get Mambus. I'd like to know, like moving forward, if one would like to like reach you via email, how can we get hold of you? If there's anything that would like to know from you. Uh, you, you know what? I think we we, we you know, there is the Stockfell Academy Facebook. Uh, there is I, a I, website. I saw, I, saw, I saw your page on Instagram. Oh, oh, okay. Legato yeah. told me because yeah, but, but there's also Stockfell Academy Facebook, and we are actually checking up now our engagement. We haven't been that active. And uh, yeah, we've got a website as well, which is the BSK marketing www.bskmarketing.co.za. That's where you can access us. 
and uh, yeah and i think if you need to contact me directly you are welcome to just drop an email uh, at info at bskmarketing.co.za yeah but my request to you is this guys if you don't commit to the stockfell academy program onwards i will not because I've taken a decision that I don't even want to do TV interviews just to talk for the sake of talking without yeah. any action plan. Yeah. So that's my challenge to you and my request to you guys. Let something come out of this talk. Yes, that's true. It's a long time. We go to see how Please. Yes. Thank you so much, Mambut. I think that's just about it, honestly. Siabongaga Kulu, like we've learned a lot, honestly. Siabongaga Mambut. Okay, no, Bonge Mina, thank you. And all the best to you all. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Okay, you too. Thank you. Bye. Right. Bye. Guys, thank you for joining everyone. I know that there's a lot that you've learned as well. We've come to the end of our engagement. Enjoy the rest of your evening.